hello everyone a very good morning to all of you am i visible and audible to you people clearly let me confirm if i'm clearly visible and audible so i will start my lecture ahead i will start autonomic nervous system just give me one second so i hope i'm clearly visible and audible to you so here i am i am dr priyanka sachdev here neet pg educator on an academy so today i am here to continue my pharma one daily series in pharmacology we have started this series and daily we take one chapter of pharmacology and study the drugs important drugs under that system we have started autonomic nervous system in autonomic nervous system we have already covered cholinergic drugs and we have already covered anticholinergic drugs so today is the third lecture we have we have to start adrenergic drugs today so let me start it without wasting time so before starting it there is an important announcement for you people so last day today is the last day to grab this opportunity what is the opportunity the opportunity is that today is 11th of september and if you take plus subscription of an academy today today is the last day if you take the plus subscription today you will get free printed notes so uh, printed notes will be provided to you free of cost so if you take the same subscription from tomorrow onwards these notes will cost you it will not be free so if you are thinking of taking a plus subscription it is a very good chance to grab this opportunity so take the subscription today only and for getting maximum discount you can use my code my code is such dev 10 don't forget it so let me start it let me start the next chapter adrenergic drugs in adrenergic drugs we will study two type of drugs alpha agonist and beta agonist let me start my chapter alpha and beta agonist let me start my chapter so you can understand this diagram very well you can see in this diagram uh, we are studying today sympathetic system in sympathetic nervous system you can see we have two neurons this is the first neuron this is known as preganglionic neuron and this is the second neuron this is known as postganglionic neuron and the junction of the two neurons is known as ganglion or it is also known as synapse you can see preganglionic neuron you can see post ganglionic neuron you can see neurotransmitters what are the neurotransmitters there you can see for pre ganglion uh, fiber the neurotransmitter is acetylcholine and for post ganglion the neurotransmitter is noradrenaline so noradrenaline is secreted at the organ this noradrenaline because of this noradrenaline this system is known as adrenergic system so today i am teaching you adrenergic drugs on these organs receptors are present so alpha and beta receptors are present so this noradrenaline after secreting it will bind with this alpha and beta receptor and show its action the organ is always a involuntary muscle that is a smooth muscle that is the basics you should know yesterday in yesterday's lecture we have already studied how this noradrenaline is synthesized so this this is the now ending let me zoom out this portion for you so this noradrenaline is synthesized here inside the now ending so it is synthesized in this way you can see it is synthesized from an amino acid known as tyrosine the tyrosine is going inside after going inside tyrosine getting converted into dopa dopa getting converted into dopamine these two steps are taking place in the cytoplasm or exoplasm of this neuron of this exon this dopamine will move this dopamine will move inside a synaptic vesicle this is a synaptic vesicle so this dopamine is moving inside after moving inside dopamine is getting converted into noradrenaline and this noradrenaline will remain in this vesicle only till the wave of depolarization is coming when the wave of depolarization is coming this this the synaptic vesicle will, will fuse with the axonal membrane and noradrenaline will come out you can see here noradrenaline is coming out and you can see the receptors alpha and beta receptors are present on the organ this is the effector organ effector cell it is a smooth muscle it is a involuntary smooth muscle on which alpha and beta receptors are present so this noradrenaline after coming out it is binding with the alpha receptor or beta receptor and show its action whatever action it so this is how the synthesis and release of noradrenaline takes place at nerve ending now how the action is terminated yesterday only i have told you this also how action is terminated the action is not terminated by any enzyme it is not like acetylcholine there is no enzyme present for the destruction of noradrenaline here this noradrenaline action is terminated by its reuptake you can you see here it is reuptake it is reuptake this this noradrenaline is going back inside first inside exon inside the cytoplasm of the exon this is cytoplasmic uptake and after that there is vesicular it is going inside into the synaptic vesicle so two uptakes are there uptake 1 and uptake 2 uptake 1 is inside the exon axonal uptake and uptake 2 is inside the vesicle and it will be re reutilized it will come again during the next cycle so this is how its action is terminated that was all about it we have seen we have two type of receptors alpha and beta so we have two types of alpha 
alpha 1 and alpha 2. We have three types of beta, beta 1, beta 2, beta 3. So yesterday only I have, I have read this table for you. I am not reading it again. You should know, you should know where alpha is present. Alpha 1 is present on which organs? Alpha 2 is present on which organs? You should know the name of the organs on which beta is present. So beta 1 is present on which organs? Beta 2 is present on which organs? And beta 3 is present on which organs? You should know it. And combining alpha and beta, we have framed this table. Yesterday only I have discussed about this table. So this is the table. This is the table. So this is about alpha receptors. This is about beta receptors. We will take 16 organs one by one. The first is blood vessel, then heart, then lungs, then eyes, then GIT, intestine, then bladder, then uterus of the female, then spleen, pancreas, liver, kidney, male sex organ that is panis, and CNS, central nervous system, and salivary glands also. So one by one, we will discuss these organs on some organs alpha, on some organs beta, on some organs both is present. Most of the organs having both. Like in alpha, mein se sa alpha you have to write in bracket, alpha 1 or alpha 2 or both. Or beta means it consa beta. Is it beta 1, beta 2 or beta 3? Or all of them. So you have to write which alpha and which beta in the bracket. In each of the organ, both alpha and beta are present. And what is the action of alpha and beta on each organ? So first you have to understand this table. If this table is okay with you, if you have understood it completely, then you have to understand four categories of the drug. Alpha agonist, beta agonist, alpha blocker and beta blocker. So understanding this will be fun for you. Alpha agonists are the drugs which will do all these things. The same written here, all these things. So alpha agonist will be the drug. Alpha blocker will be the drugs which will do opposite of this. So opposite of this will be done by alpha blocker. Beta agonist will be the drugs which will do same thing. Written in this table here. Uh, beta agonist. And beta blockers will be the drug which will do opposite of it. So if you understand this table completely, the four chapters alpha, beta agonist, and alpha beta blockers will be fun for you. So you have to understand this table. This table is the core for adrenergic and anti-adrenergic drugs. You have to understand it. So let me start with it. Let me start the first chapter, adrenergic drugs. Adrenergic drugs I am teaching you. In adrenergic drugs, not only in this chapter. In all chapters of pharmacology, I will teach you drugs in these five headings. First, I will tell you the classification of the drugs. Then I will tell you mechanism of action of the drugs. Then actions, uses, contraindication and side effects. So any drug in pharmacology you have to you have to study in this sequence only. So let me start adrenergic drugs. Let me tell you the classification. This is the classification in front of you. Now the basis of classification is uses of the drugs. Uses of the drugs. Some of these drugs raises blood pressure. So these are known as pressor, pressor agents. Some of these drugs will dilate. They act on the lung and they dilate the lung. So these are used in asthma. So these are known as bronchodilators. Some of these drugs are uh, increase the heart rate, increase the force of contraction, increase the velocity of conduction in the heart. So these are cardiac stimulants. So some of them are acting on blood vessels, some of them are acting on lungs, some of acting, uh, some of them are acting on the heart. Some of them acts in the CNS. In the CNS, they will stimulate the CNS. They will stimulate the, the CNS. They will, uh, they will be used in the conditions in which CNS stimulation is required. Some of them will act on the uterus uterus and they will relax the uterus so they will be given in threatened abortion and some of them again act on the cns and they decrease the hunger they decrease the appetite they will inhibit the appetite center in the cns so decrease hunger decrease hunger means decrease diet patient will eat less so patient will lose weight weight will be lost so these are known as anorectins some of them will act in the nose and they will act as decongestants Nuzzle decongestants, so they are, these are used in nuzzle blockage. So based on the use, these are the 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 7 categories of the drugs you have to learn. So that is the classification is in front of you. You have to name drugs inside each category. That is the classification. Now, some of them are alpha agonists, some of them are beta agonists, some of them are both, alpha plus beta agonists. Let me start. Three drugs are important here. I will discuss three drugs for you. Noradrenaline. Adrenaline and isoprenaline. These three drugs and dopamine and dobutamine. These five drugs I will discuss in detail. You have to mark these five drugs. These are emergency drugs because these are pressure agents and cardiac stimulants. So I will discuss five drugs for you. Adrenaline, noradrenaline, isoprenaline, dopamine and dobutamine. Dopamine and dobutamine. Butamine. I will discuss these five drugs with you one by one. So let me tell you, okay. Uh, so coming on the mechanism of action first, coming on mechanism of action, how these drugs are acting as adrenergic drugs, sympathomimetic drugs, what is the mechanism of action? These are two types of drugs, direct sympathomimetic 
and indirect sympathomimetic and mixed one. Mixed one will have both the function. What do you mean by direct and indirect? Some of these drugs, what they will do, this is the drug, uh, this is the drug, just suppose this is the drug, drug one, this is the drug. This drug, structure of this drug is exactly same as that of noradrenaline. So these are structurally and functionally same as that of noradrenaline. So this drug will bind with alpha and beta receptor in the same way as noradrenaline was binding and show the same action as noradrenaline was doing. So these are known as direct sympathomimetic. These are agonist. These are direct uh, sympathomimetic. They will act on alpha and beta receptor in the same way as noradrenaline was doing. There is another category of the drug. You may say drug 2. Drug 2. These drugs are not structurally similar to noradrenaline. Structurally similar, so they cannot bind to alpha and beta receptor. They will not bind to alpha and beta receptor because their structure is different as that of noradrenaline. So what they will do? They will increase the secretion of endogenous noradrenaline only. They will, in, they will increase the secretion of more and more and more noradrenaline at the junction. So increases the function of endogenous noradrenaline only. So these are indirect ones. So there are two type of drugs as I have told you, direct ones. They directly act as agonist on alpha and beta receptor because they are structurally similar to noradrenaline. And in the indirect one, they act on the neuron. They will increase the release of noradrenaline, endogenous noradrenaline, but they cannot act on the receptors. Noradrenaline will act on the receptors. So which one of them are direct? Adrenaline, noradrenaline, isoprenaline, phenylephrine, methoxamine. These all are direct. Which of them are indirect? Tyramine and amphetamine are indirect. Some of them are mixed ones showing the both actions, actions like dopamine. So that is the mechanism of action. I hope you got it. So you got the classification of the drug. There are seven categories. You know the name of the seven categories, I, I, I guess. Some of them are pressure agents. They act on blood vessels. Some of them are cardiac stimulants. They act on the heart. Some of them are lung dilators, bronchodilators. They act on the lungs. Some of them are nasal decongestants. They act on the nose. Some of them are uterine relaxants. Yeah. So they act on the uterus. Some of them are anorectics. They act on the brain uh, hunger center, anorectics. So you know the various uses according to which you know the seven categories of the classification. Mechanism of action, there are three mechanisms, direct, indirect and mixed one. You know the meaning of each of them, yes or no? You know the meaning, what is direct? They are agonist of noradrenaline and they act on alpha and beta receptor in the same way as noradrenaline is doing and show the same action as noradrenaline is doing. So these are noradrenaline agonist, number one. That's why known as direct. The indirect ones. They, will, they are not structurally similar to noradrenaline. They will increase the synthesis and secretion of natural endogenous noradrenaline. That's why known as indirect. And mixed one will show both the action. Coming on actions. Before coming on uses, contraindication and side effects, I would like to discuss the actions of noradrenaline. This is the most difficult part, I must say. Very difficult to understand. I will try my best, but very difficult to understand. So, must, most important and difficult to understand is the action on the blood vessel. Listen, listen everyone. Let me say alpha, alpha and let me say beta, beta. So alpha may, alpha 1, alpha 2 both, but mainly alpha 1 is present on the blood vessels and beta 2 present on the blood vessels. So alpha 1 causes vasoconstriction and beta 2 causes vasodilatation. Let me draw a blood vessel for you and explain this phenomenon. So this is a blood vessel. We know blood vessel have three layers, intima, media and externa. So this is the intima lined by endothelial cells. Let me say this is the intima. This is the media. Let me see, this is the media. The media and the outermost is the externa. Draw externa also. This is the externa. In the media, receptors are present in the media. So, receptors are present in the media. So, this is the media. In the media, there is alpha 1 and there is beta 2. Both are present. Alpha 1 is also present and beta 2 is also present. Yes or no? So, this alpha 1, when noradrenaline is coming, it is binding with both. It is binding with both. So with noradrenaline binding with alpha 1, it causes vasoconstriction. And when it binds with beta 2, it causes vasodilatation. Vasoconstriction means narrowing of the lumen. So it will increase the blood pressure. And vasodilatation means dilatation of the lumen. So it will decrease the blood pressure. Have you got it? So what will be the net effect? Increase in blood pressure or decrease in blood pressure? Have you got it? What I mean? Have you got it? So see this diagram please carefully. Blood vessels contain alpha 1 and beta 2. Alpha 1 causes vasoconstriction on stimulation and beta 2 causes vasodilatation on stimulation. So can I say alpha 1 increases blood pressure and beta 2 decreases blood pressure? Yes, on which blood pressure? Now blood pressure has two components, systolic blood pressure 
and diastolic blood pressure. Diastolic blood pressure is 120 normally and diastolic is 80. So this blood pressure which depends on the lumen, lumen of the blood vessel, which depends on the lumen of the blood pressure is diastolic blood pressure. This is diastolic blood pressure which depends on the lumen of the blood pressure or peripheral resistance. So it is diastolic DBP, DBP which increases or DBP which decreases. So DBP increase or decrease depends on alpha 1 and beta 2. So in short till now what we have learned? We have learned two things alpha 1 and beta 2. Alpha 1 increases DBP because it causes vasoconstriction and beta 2 decreases DBP because it causes vasodilatation and both alpha 1 and alpha 2 are present on blood vessel wall. That is the summary till now. What about SBP? What about SBP? This is DBP, diastolic blood pressure. Systolic blood pressure is depend on Anyone coming on the second organ. To understand this, you have to understand second organ, heart. On heart, no alpha is present. Make a cross here. Only beta 1 is present, not beta 2. Beta 2 was present on blood vessels. Beta 1 is present on heart. Beta 1 is present on heart and it increases the rate, force and velocity. Increases the rate, increases the force, increases the velocity. So because of force, increases the force of contraction, it increases SBP. So SBP depends on beta 1. So let me tell you the summary. Let me tell you the summary. It is difficult. I tried my best. So let me draw a blood vessel here. Let me draw a heart here. This is the heart. These are the four chambers of the heart. This is the left side of the heart. This is the blood vessel. This is the thermose layer, intima of the blood vessel. This is the middle layer, middle layer. And this is the outermost thermosphere. And in the heart, this is the left ventricle. This is the wall of the left ventricle. Let me draw the receptors. Let me draw the receptors. In the wall of the blood vessel, alpha 1 is present and beta 2 is present. And in the left ventricle, heart, beta 1 is present. If you understood this now, understanding the entire uh, chapter will be fun for you. So you have to understand, this is the most toughest part. Alpha 1, beta 2 and beta 1, you know, where present. Listen now, listen, what is happening? This alpha 1 is causing vasoconstriction. Beta 2 is causing vasodilatation because they are present on the surface, on the uh, media of the blood vessel. So it causes vasoconstriction, so it increases DBP, DBP, diastolic blood pressure. It decreases DBP. Beta 2 decreases DBP. Diastolic blood pressure. And beta 1 is present on the heart. So it increases force of contraction. And because of which it increases SBP. Systolic blood pressure. I hope I am crystal clear to you. I hope so. So what increases DBP? What decreases DBP? What increases SBP? Name the receptors. So DBP depends on alpha 1. DBP Decrease depends on beta 2 and SBP increase depends on beta 1. So that is the summary. That is the summary. Tell me the summary. So that is about blood vessels. Blood vessels, vasoconstriction, vasodilatation, alpha 1 and beta 2 as I have already told you. Alpha 1 and beta 2. That depends on DBP and blood pressure have two components. Cardiac output and peripheral resistance. Cardiac output maintains SBP and peripheral resistance maintains DBP. So SBP depends on cardiac output that is the force of contraction. So this is the summary which I have already explained. So alpha 1 and beta 2 are present on blood vessels. On blood vessels. Alpha 1 causes vasoconstriction. Beta 2 causes vasodilatation. That's why alpha 1 causes increase in DBP because of vasoconstriction. If lumen is contracted, the blood pressure will increase. So increase DBP and vasodilatation will lead to decrease DBP. So beta 2 causes decreased DBP and beta 1 is present on heart. Beta 1 is not present on blood vessels. So it, it, it controls SBP and increases the force of contraction. That's why it increases SBP. So that is the summary. Again, I will, I will explain you. Those who have not understood it properly again. If you know many um, few students understand this concept. This is the most difficult concept. When I was in your shoes, now when I was in second prop in my MBBS year, I didn't understand this. It's the most difficult thing in pharmacology I find out. So listen, this is a blood vessel. Again, I am drawing. This is a blood vessel and this is a heart. So which receptors are present on blood vessel and which are present on heart? This is the left side of the heart. This is the left ventricle, left auricle, left ventricle. This is the wall of left ventricle. And this is the media, interna media, media of the blood vessel. Name the receptors. So in blood vessel, it is alpha 1 and beta, beta 2 is present on blood vessel. Beta 1 is present in the wall of the heart. So just learn this. First learn this. Then tell me the mechanism. Alpha 1 causes vasoconstriction. Beta 2 causes vasodilatation. And beta 1 in the heart increases force of contraction. Now tell me the effect on blood pressure. 
who will tell me the effect on blood pressure because of vasoconstriction alpha 1 alpha 1 increases dbp increases dbp because of vasodilatation because of vasodilatation beta 2 decreases dbp so alpha 1 and beta 2 maintain dbp and beta 1 is present on heart so beta 1 because it increases the force of contraction of the heart it increases sp so this is the summary so dbp increase or decrease dono ho sakta hai sbp sirf increase ho sakta due to the stimulation of these three receptors alpha 1 uh, beta 2 and beta 1 that is the summary till now i hope it is clear to you i hope it is clear to you so that was about the blood vessel let me come on heart let me come on the second organ heart so okay before coming on heart i will ask you five questions five questions what is the effect of adrenaline non adrenaline isoprenaline dopamine and dobutamine 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 these are the five drugs if i give these drugs to my patient one by one what will be the effect on blood pressure of my patient if i am giving an injection of adrenaline what will happen to blood pressure if i am giving an injection of non adrenaline what will happen to blood pressure if i am giving an injection of isoprenaline or dopamine or dobutamine what will be the effect on blood pressure of the patient you have to discuss it one by one so this is the summary till now you have to learn that adrenaline stimulate all all receptors alpha 1 alpha 2 beta 1 beta 2 beta 3 there are total five receptors now 2 alpha and 3 beta so all five are stimulated by adrenaline first learn it non adrenaline have no beta 2 action beta 2 nahi hai alpha 1 alpha 2 beta 1 beta 3 beta 2 is absent in non adrenaline please learn it please learn it in a, and in isoprenaline there is no alpha 1 alpha action neither alpha 1 nor alpha 2 alpha is absent in isoprenaline in isoprenaline all beta is present beta 1 beta 2 beta 3 but alpha is absent and dopamine dopamine i will tell you later on let me discuss these three first so let me talk about these drugs one by one let me take the first drug noradrenaline let me start with noradrenaline who will tell me the effect of uh, blood pressure now apply like mathematics you know the effect of various receptors sbp dbp I have already told you that alpha 1 controls DBP, it increases DBP. Beta 2 decreases DBP. Alpha 1 increases DBP. I have told you the reason. Beta 2 decreases DBP. I have already told you the reason. And beta 1 increases SBP. I have already told you the reason. Now apply this mathematics on each of the drug. Take first drug as noradrenaline. See what receptors are present. In noradrenaline, beta 2 is absent. As I have told you, in noradrenaline, beta 2 is absent. So if beta 2 is absent, so ye to kaati do na? Beta 2 is absent. So only alpha 1 and beta 1 is present. Alpha 1 will decrease DBP and beta 1 will increase SBP. So if I give myself injection of noradrenaline, my SBP, DBP both will increase. You know the reason for each of them. Done. So on giving an injection of noradrenaline, SBP increases because of beta 1 stimulation and DBP increases because of alpha 1 stimulation. So overall mean BP will rise. Have you got it? Have you got it? So alpha 1 causes vasoconstriction, so it increases DBP. And uh, beta 1 causes cardiac stimulation, so it increases SBP. Beta 2 is absent in noradrenaline. Beta 2 is absent in noradrenaline. So there is no problem. There is no problem. See noradrenaline. If I give an injection of noradrenaline to some patient, what will happen? SBP will increase. DBP will increase. So net blood pressure will increase. And because, because beta 1 receptors are present on the heart, so it increases heart rate also. It increases heart rate also. By direct action, heart rate will increase. But since DBP is increased, so by reflux action, heart rate will decrease. And this is indirect effect, reflex effect. Reflex effect is more prominent as compared to direct effect. So net heart rate will decrease. So what is the summary? What is the summary? Let me tell you the summary. If I am giving a noradrenaline injection to some patient, what will happen to DBP? What will happen to SBP? What will happen to heart rate? You have to answer me. And with reason, with reason. It is not the thing that you will increase. So, EBP will increase, SBP will increase, and net heart rate will decrease. This is the answer. What is the reason for each of them? Why DBP will increase? DBP will increase because of alpha 1 stimulation. Alpha 1 stimulation is caused by noradrenaline. SBP will increase because of stimulation of beta 1. Beta 1 present on heart. That got stimulated and that is due to increase in force of contraction. These are present on blood vessels. Alpha 1 is present on blood vessel because of the stimulation. There is vasoconstriction and vasoconstriction will lead to injury. There is no beta 2. There is no beta 2 on. Beta 2 is absent. In noradrenaline, beta 2 is absent. So there is no vasodilatation. And heart rate because of beta 1 present on heart. Heart rate will increase 
but that is direct action but because of reflex action because gbp is increasing now reflex heart rate will decrease and reflex is more as compared to direct so net heart rate is decreased so that is the summary i know it is tough i know that's why i tried my best so what is the action on sbp what is the action on dbp what is the action on net heart rate that is about noradrenaline let me take another drug now isoprenaline who will tell me about isoprenaline who will tell me about isoprenaline uh, those three questions only what is that if i give myself injection of isoprenaline imagine this is isoprenaline i am giving it to myself what will happen to my sbp what will happen to my dbp and what will happen to my heart rate see the receptors isoprenaline has beta 1 beta 2 beta 3 isoprenaline alpha is absent and isoprenaline alpha is absent so sbp is controlled by beta 1 so beta 1 is present now so sbp will increase dbp is controlled by beta 2 Yes, but by alpha one and beta two, so alpha one so absent there, but beta two present there, na that will decrease DBP. So here as BP will increase, DBP will decrease. Since DBP will decrease, so there is reflex increase in heart rate. So heart rate will increase. So that is the summary. So that is rise in SBP and fall in DBP. That is due to beta one and beta two and alpha is absent. Let me tell you once again, those who have forgot, let me tell you again. So this is the blood vessel on blood vessel, and this is the heart. these are the four chambers of the heart this is the left side of the heart this is the left ventricle let me draw here alpha 1 beta 2 is present and here beta 1 is present if you learn this diagram now you can solve any question based on these concepts so alpha 1 alpha 1 causes vasoconstriction so increases dbp yes beta 2 causes vasodilatation so decreases dbp yes and beta 1 causes increase force of contraction increases force of contraction so it increases it increases as dp so here in isoprenaline i am giving myself injection of uh, isoprenaline isoprenaline in isoprenaline we have no alpha receptor we have beta 1 beta 2 and beta 3 no alpha so this is cancelled alpha is absent so this is cancelled we have beta 1 and beta 2 both So SBP is increased, DBP is increased. Both of them is increased. You got it? You got. I'm sorry. SBP is increased due to beta one, and DBP is decreased due to beta two. So that is the summary. So SBP is increased. You can see here there is rise in SBP and there is fall in DBP. So rise in SBP and fall in DBP. That is the summary. If I was giving myself injection of noradrenaline, both were increasing. If I am giving myself injection of isoprenaline, SBP will increase and DBP will decrease. So you should know the reason for all of them. And what about heart rate? See, isoprenaline as BP is increasing. See as BP, it is increasing. See DBP, it is decreasing. So direct heart rate is increased. Indirect due to fall in DBP again, it is increased. So net heart rate is increased. So heart rate is increased. Heart rate is but decreasing in noradrenaline. In isoprenaline, it is increased. Have you got it? Have you got it? Now I will tell you last thing. Then I will summarize all three. Coming the most difficult one, adrenaline. If I myself, if myself, I will give an injection of adrenaline to myself. What will happen to my blood pressure? Now let me tell you, adrenaline has all five receptors: alpha one, alpha two, beta one, beta two, beta. All five receptors are present in adrenaline. These are these these are the receptors which are stimulated by adrenaline. So what will happen? What will happen? Let me draw a blood vessel and let me draw a heart for you. This is the blood vessel and this is the heart. These are the four chambers of the heart. This is the left side of the heart. This is the left ventricular wall. So on blood vessel we have alpha one and beta two, and on heart we have beta one. ये तो बहुत बार हो गया आपको learn हो गया होगा. So what will happen? What will happen? You tell me. So alpha one causes vasoconstriction, so it causes increased DBP. Beta two causes vasodilatation, so it causes decrease in DBP. And beta one causes increase in force of contraction, so it increases as BP. as bp so that is the summary now if i myself giving myself an injection of adrenaline adrenaline have both alpha 1 alpha 2 beta 1 beta 2 beta 3 everything is present in adrenaline so alpha 1 will also be stimulated beta 2 will also be stimulated and beta 1 will also be stimulated so you will say ma'am okay because beta 1 is stimulated as bp to badhega wo to samajh gaya dbp ka kya hoga what will happen to dbp wo badhega ki kam hoga that is my question to you if i myself if i am giving an injection of adrenaline to some patient Or to myself, this is adrenaline. What will happen to my DBP? SBP तो बढ़ेगा चलो समझ गया. Beta one stimulate होगा तो SBP बढ़ेगा. DBP एक तरफ से बढ़ रहा है, एक तरफ से कम हो रहा है, तो होगा क्या? Anyone among you? Anyone among you can tell what will happen to DBP if I am giving an injection of adrenaline to some patient? 
what will happen not conceptually it should increase also it should decrease also but both cannot happen now you know many of the students answer that ma'am they will nullify each other and remain constant no this is not the same what will happen listen the story now listen the story at low concentration as soon as i will give the adrenaline there is high concentration in the blood so at high concentration alpha 1 is stimulated after some time due to reuptake the concentration will fall so at low concentration beta 2 will stimulate so now tell the story so you will tell me ki ma'am as soon as you will give the injection dbp rises because alpha 1 got stimulated so dbp rises after some time dbp fall because beta 2 will be stimulated yeah so there is a triphasic response there is a triphasic response so you see whenever i am giving adrenaline injection to some patient initially the concentration of adrenaline is high in the blood at high concentration alpha 1 responds and after some time due to reuptake reuptake inside the nerve the concentration in the blood will fall so at low concentration beta 2 beta 2 respond beta 2 will be stimulated so at high concentration alpha 1 at low concentration beta 2 so at high concentration increase dbp at high concentration and at low concentration decrease dbp that is the summary so this is known as triple response it's known as triple response see the first diagram don't see the second one we draw a line so see this diagram uh, left hand side diagram as soon as you are giving the injection the dbp is rising dbp is rising because of high concentration and this action is due to alpha 1 due to alpha 1 at high concentration alpha 1 is stimulated causing rise in bp causing vasoconstriction in the blood vessel causing rise in dbp after that it will become normal the second is normal after that it will fall the fall is due to beta 2 action at low concentration beta 2 will get stimulated it will cause vasodilatation it will cause fall in bp so this is known as typical triple response triple response so what is the triple response you tell me so increase in sbp and sbp to badega hi increase in dbp then bp returns to normal then fall in bp that is rise hua alpha 1 ki wajah se aur fall hua beta 2 ki wajah se give me a thumbs up so alpha 1 ki wajah se rise hai aur beta 2 ki wajah se fall hai so this is triple response Again, I am summarizing. This is adrenaline injection in my hand. I am giving adrenaline to some patient. What if I measure the blood pressure? As soon as I will give the injection, blood pressure first rises, then become normal, then fall. So this is known as triple response, triphasic, triphasic response. First rise, then normal, then fall. Rise is due to alpha one stimulation. Fall is due to beta two stimulation. Alpha one, beta two. At high concentration, as soon as I am giving the injection, the concentration of the adrenaline is high in the blood. At high concentration, alpha one got stimulated. after some time due to reuptake in the blood the concentration of adrenaline will fall in my blood after that at low concentration beta 2 will be stimulated alpha 1 causes vasoconstriction beta 2 causes vasodilatation have you got it give me a thumbs up it was the most difficult concept of entire pharmacology till my knowledge up to my knowledge i find this concept very difficult not as a subjective thing maybe tumhare liye kuch aur difficult hoga lekin for me this is the most difficult concept from pharmacology i found till date yes so that is the thing now what is vasomotor reversal of dale what is vasomotor reversal of dale what do you mean by it as i have told you there is a triple response initially there is rise and then there is fall then there is fall rise is due to alpha 1 fall is due to beta 2 this is all happening when i am giving an injection of adrenaline to myself now i am taking two injections these are two injections this is alpha blocker so first i give alpha blocker and then i will give adrenaline what will happen to my blood pressure If I am giving directly adrenaline, the first blood pressure is rising, then normal, then falling. That is triple response when adrenaline is given. So rise is due to alpha blocker, alpha one receptor, and fall is due to beta two. We know the summary till now. If instead of giving directly adrenaline, if I am giving first alpha blocker, alpha blocker. So first I am giving alpha blocker injection, so that alpha blocker is blocking all alpha receptors in the body. Then I am giving adrenaline. Then I am giving adrenaline. So after giving adrenaline, alpha is already blocked. Alpha is already blocked, so no rise in BP will be seen. Only fall in BP is seen because only beta receptors are remaining. Beta two action will be shown. Alpha action is gone. So this is known as vasomotor reversal of Dale because Dale is the scientist who has given this concept to us. So that is known as that is the name of the scientist, vasomotor reversal of Dale. So here I am giving adrenaline. Before adrenaline, I am giving alpha blocker. So what is the summary? Again, let me tell you the summary. Let me tell you the summary. those who have not understood let me let me summarize the whole concept the whole story in front of you so listen listen okay let me draw a blood vessel this is a blood vessel this is a blood vessel wall of the blood vessel the media of the blood vessel and this is the heart these are the four chambers of the heart this is the left side of the heart this is the left ventricle cover wall so what receptors are present on blood vessel and what receptors are present on heart 
so on, on on blood vessel we have two receptors alpha 1 and beta 2 on heart we have beta 1 just learn this ye learn nahi kiya to you can't pass your exam you have to learn this concept alpha 1 alpha 2 on blood vessel and beta 1 on heart ye to learn karna hi padega na what alpha 1 on stimulation causes when alpha 1 got stimulated it causes vasoconstriction because of vasoconstriction it increases gbp diastolic blood pressure beta 2 on stimulation causes vasodilatation so it decreases dbp on stimulation on stimulation it decreases dbp so alpha 1 and beta 2 control dbp not sbp they are controlling dbp one is increasing dbp one is decreasing dbp on stimulation you can see which is causing what what about beta 1 beta 1 is present on heart so on stimulation when beta 1 got stimulated it increases the force of contraction force of contraction of heart that's why it increases sbp so sbp depends on beta 1 sbp DPP depends on alpha 1 and beta 2. Now, what will happen if I give myself an injection of adrenaline? That is the question. It is the question. Adrenaline is the question. Adrenaline is the question. Adrenaline will stimulate all. Adrenaline will stimulate alpha 1 also, alpha 2 also, beta 1 also, beta 2 also, beta 3 also. So, adrenaline will stimulate everything in the body, all five receptors. So, alpha 1 will get stimulated? Yes, it will. Beta 2 will get stimulated? Yes, it will. And beta 1 on the heart will get stimulated? Yes, it will. So, beta 1 to SBP badhaega. So, there is no question for SBP. SBP to badhaega hi badhaega. On giving adrenaline injection, SBP will rise. There is no confusion in it. But what happened to DBP? That was my question. If I give myself injection of adrenaline, what will happen to my DBP? By, by considering alpha 1 receptor, it should rise. By considering beta 2 receptor, it should fall. So, what is happening to my DBP if I giving myself an injection of adrenaline? That was my question to you. I have already answered this question. So, what will happen? You tell me. At high concentration, as soon as I am giving the injection, the concentration of adrenaline inside the blood is high. So, at high concentration, alpha 1 is stimulated. And after some time, due to reuptake, the concentration will fall. Concentration of the adrenaline in the blood will become low. So, at low concentration, beta 2 will stimulate it. Now, you tell me what will be your answer. So, as soon as ma'am, I give the injection, you should tell me, ma'am, as soon as you will give the injection, your DBP will rise. Because at that time, concentration is high, alpha 1 is stimulated. So, as soon as you are giving the injection, BP should rise. After that, it will become normalized. After some time, it should fall. It should fall. The blood pressure should fall after some time because at low concentration, beta 2 is stimulated. So, this rise, listen, in this diagram, rise is due to alpha 1, fall is due to beta 2. This is diagram for DBP. SBP to badega hi badega always. SBP to dekhte se badta hi jayega. DBP pehle badega, fir normal hoga, fir kam hoga. Kaise samjha hoon? Samjha kya? Have you got it? So, this is known as typical triple response. See, first rise, then normal, then fall. So, triple triphasic response. So, to prove it, we can do one thing. Instead of giving directly adrenaline injection, first give alpha blocker injection. First give myself a patient alpha blocker injection. After that, give adrenaline injection. Now, what will happen? If you give alpha blocker first, it will block all alpha receptors. So, alpha, alpha action will not be seen. Alpha 1 also, alpha 2 also. So, this alpha is blocked. This alpha is blocked. Now, if you give adrenaline injection, rise will not be seen. Directly fall will be seen. Only fall will be seen. This is known as vasomotor reversal of Dale. You can see here the vasomotor reversal of Dale. Here, before adrenaline, I am giving alpha block. So, alpha blocker is blocking the alpha action. So, alpha action is gone. So, rise is gone. Only fall is there. So, that is that is discovered by Dale. That is known as vasomotor reversal of Dale. Done. Have you got it? Have you got it? Those who are listening, Milin. Osama, done. Yes, Milan, you got it. What about others? Have you got it? Should I proceed? Should I proceed? So that is about the adrenaline. Adrenaline, SBP always rises for adrenaline. What about DBP? DBP first rises, then normal, then fall. So nil effect on DBP. You can see it will nullify each other finally. Finally, it will nullify. So first rise, then normal, then fall. So triple response in DBP. SBP always rises. That is about adrenaline. What about heart rate? Heart rate, direct action will increase. Indirect action is nil because indirect action of heart rate depends on DBP. On DBP, the effect is nullified. That's why it is nil and net effect is rise. Done. So, that is the summary till now. That is the summary. So, you know. So, tell me what, what we have learned till now. What we have learned. If I am giving myself injection of noradrenaline, what will happen? SBP will rise. DBP, SBP will rise because of beta 1. DBP will rise because of alpha 1. So, SBP, DBP both will rise. SBP bhi badega, DBP bhi badega. That is noradrenaline. If I am giving injection of isoprenaline, what will happen? SBP will rise because of beta 1. But DBP will fall because of beta 2. So, SBP rise, DBP fall. 
that is the summary for isoprenaline what will happen if i am giving adrenaline injection hbp will always rise dbp will show triple response so first rise then normal then fall so that is the summary have you got it have you got it give me a thumbs up again so that is the summary nor adrenaline diya to kya hoga isoprenaline diya to kya hoga adrenaline diya to kya hoga you should know the receptors for each of them you should know the receptors nor adrenaline nor adrenaline just a second okay so nor adrenaline there is no beta 2 in noradrenaline there is no beta 2 so alpha 1 alpha 2 beta 1 and beta 3 is present but beta 2 is not present in noradrenaline in isoprenaline no alpha only beta is present so beta 1 beta 2 beta 3 is present but no alpha alpha is not present and in adrenaline all of them are present everything is present in adrenaline so alpha 1 is also present alpha 2 is also present beta 1 beta 2 beta 3 everything is present so let me summarize that is the crux let me summarize please make this table with me those who are interested so what will happen to hbp hbp depends on beta 1 which is present on heart so in which of them beta 1 is present so they will rise hbp see in the bracket see what what will happen to dbp 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 depends on two things alpha 1 and beta 2 and beta 2 in those alpha 1 is present it will cause rise in bp dbp and in those in which beta 2 is present they will cause fall in dbp and beta 1 always causes rise in sbp sbp fall on ka option nahi hai. and what will happen to heart rate what will happen to heart rate heart rate depends on again beta 1 like sbp only depends on beta 1. so write down the summary write down now it is only mathematics now simple mathematics the receptors are in front of you kisme kaun sa hai or kaun se receptor se kya hota hai i have already told you so just apply like mathematics and tell me the answer let me tell the first first um, uh, chemical first drug nor adrenaline so nor adrenaline may beta 1 hai kya yes beta 1 hai hai so it will rise sbp beta 2 or alpha 1 may se kya hai beta 2 or alpha 1 may se kya hai so i can see alpha 1 but there is no beta 2 so alpha 1 is present so alpha 1 will increase dbp also so sbp will increase dbp will increase and beta 1 since there is beta 1 it will increase in heart rate but reflex heart rate will decrease Direct heart rate to increase over here, but DBP is now but ki reflex will decrease. So net yaan pe decrease maan hoongi. That is a clean sheet. So that is the summary for, for noradrenaline. If I am giving an injection of noradrenaline, SBP will rise, DBP will rise, but heart rate will fall. So that is the summary. If you can understand, it's good. If you can't understand, learn it. So noradrenaline, increase SBP, increase DBP, fall heart rate. Done. That is the summary. And what receptors it is causing stimulated wear in the blood vessel in the heart is in front of you. Let me come on the another another one is isoprenaline isoprenaline apply for sbp first sbp rise occurs due to beta 1 beta 1 is present in it yes it is present so it will cause rise in sbp dbp dbp occurs due to alpha 1 or beta 2 dono mein se kya present hai alpha 1 ki beta 2 see here here i can't see alpha 1 i can see beta 2 i can see beta 2 in isoprenaline beta 2 causes fall in dbp so it causing it is causing fall in dbp it is causing fall in dbp and heart rate depends on beta 1 so yes beta 1 is present and beta 1 will cause rise in heart rate. So, SBP will rise, DBP will fall and heart rate will rise. So, I am giving injection of isoprenaline. If you measure my SBP, it will rise. If you measure my DBP, it will fall. If you measure my heart rate, it will rise. So, that is the after isoprenaline injection with reason I am telling you why it has happened. Let me tell you the third thing, the most difficult one that is adrenaline. Adrenaline apply like mathematics. Now, apply the things like mathematics. So in adrenaline, all five receptors are present. Alpha 1, alpha 2, beta 1, beta 2, beta 3. You can see here all five are present. SBP depends on beta 1. Yes, beta 1 is present. So SBP will rise. There is no doubt SBP will rise. DBP depends. There is a problem with DBP. DBP depends on two things. Alpha 1 and beta 2. So alpha 1 be present and beta 2 be present. So DBP ka kya hoga? DBP ka kya hoga? So at high concentration, alpha 1 is stimulated. So, at, at, at low concentration, beta 2 is stimulated. So, as soon as I give the injection, the concentration is high, so alpha 1 is stimulated. After some time, concentration will fall and beta 2 will be stimulated. So, triphasic response. First, first there is rise in DBP, then it will become normal, then it will fall. So, this is known as triphasic response. Done. And heart rate will increase because of beta 1. Beta 1 is there, heart rate will increase. So, that is the summary. So, on giving injection of adrenaline, SBP will rise. DBP first rise, then normal, then fall. And heart rate will rise. Heart rate falls if it may hota due to reflex action that is noradrenaline. 
In noradrenaline, only heart rate is falling. Otherwise, heart rate is always rising. Give me a thumbs up. Give me a thumbs up. I tried my best. That was the most difficult concept, but I tried my best. Done. So that is a summary. Now I have to teach you five drugs. Now we are done with adrenaline, noradrenaline, isoprenaline. The two more drugs to be remained here is dopamine and dobutamine. Let me talk about the fourth one and the fifth one. Then again we will summarize it. In which we have which receptor? So dopamine, which these receptors are present? Alpha. All alpha are present. Alpha one, alpha two. From beta only beta one is present. So alpha is present, beta one is present, and D one, D two receptors, dopamine receptors are present. What do you mean by dopamine? Beta two is absent, huh? In dopamine, beta two is absent. Please remember. Please remember. So dopamine receptors are present. Uh, so what will happen at low concentration? If you are giving dopamine at low concentration, I will tell you the exact concentration. At low concentration, D one, D two will be stimulated. At moderate concentration, alpha will be stimulated. And at high concentration, beta one will be stimulated. Let me tell you, as you know the crux also. So at low concentration, dopamine receptors D one, D two, which are present in the kidney and mesenteric blood vessels, it will be stimulated. So low concentration is not two to ten. It is written wrongly here. Correct it in my notes. It is less than two two microgram per kg per minute. This is low considered as low concentration. If I am giving myself low concentration dopamine at less than uh, two microgram per kg per minute. So this dopamine will go in my blood, and at low concentration, it will stimulate only dopamine receptors. These dopamine receptors are present inside my kidney vessels and intestine blood vessels. So my kidney and intestine will receive more blood. My kidney and my intestines will receive more blood because the blood vessels will dilate. They will dilate there because I have given dopamine at low concentration. At moderate concentration, between two to ten, between two to ten, here it is written two to ten microgram per liter. Beta one will be stimulated. Beta one, beta one is present over where? Beta one कहाँ पे present है? Beta one is present over heart. So they will increase the force. They will increase the force of contraction. They will increase the force of contraction. They will not much increase the rate. They will increase the force. That is inotropic effect. Positive inotropic effect. So at moderate effect, they are increasing the force of contraction. So they are useful in cardiogenic shock at moderate concentration. And at high concentration is more than ten. So less than two, two to ten, more than ten. That is low concentration, moderate concentration, high concentration. So at more than ten, alpha one action will be predominant. Where alpha one is present, I have already told you, alpha one is present on blood vessel and it causes vasoconstriction in the blood vessel. So inotropic effect to pehle hi dikha rahe the. Ab vasoconstrictor bhi dikhayenge. So inotropic effect plus vasoconstrictor effect, the combining effect is known as inoconstrictor. So at high concentration, it is known as inoconstrictor. At high concentration, so this is the summary in front of you. If you are giving injection of dopamine, what is the concentration in the injection? Is it less than two, less than two microgram, two to ten microgram, or more than ten microgram per kg per minute? That is the concentration is low or moderate or high. At what concentration you are giving dopamine? If you are giving low concentration, it will cause dilatation of kidney and intestinal blood vessels. So if you are giving at moderate concentration, then beta one will be stimulated. And that beta one will cause uh, heart to stimulate it. That is positive inotropic effect will be there. And at high concentration, alpha one will be stimulated. It will produce vasoconstrictor effect. So it is inoconstrictor, inotropic as well as vasoconstrictor. Inotro inotropic because of beta one and vasoconstrictor due to alpha one. So alpha one, beta one combining together is inoconstrictor. So can I say? Can I say dopamine? Dopamine is a inoconstrictor constrictor. Oh, constrictor. Yes or no? Inoconstrictor means inotropic, positive inotropic effect, and vasoconstriction in the blood vessels. Positive inotropic effect is due to beta one stimulation, and vasoconstriction is due to alpha one stimulation. So this is at moderate concentration. This is at high concentration. Again, give me a thumbs up. Again, give me a thumbs up. Done. Done. Let us proceed. Yes, this is the uses of melon. You are right. So these are the uses in front of uh, you. Dopamine is basically used for cardiogenic shock, cardiogenic shock or septic shock or severe congestive heart failure. T half is only two minutes. So that is the thing. That is the thing. And dobutamine, last drug is dobutamine. It is only one receptor. It is selective beta one agonist. Where beta one is present, beta one is present on heart. So it is only inotropic. It is positive inotropic. It is not vasoconstrictor. It is only positive inotropic. Again, it increases the force of contraction without significant change in heart rate. So again, T half is T two minutes only, and uh, it is used again for cardiogenic shock. So that is the summary in front of you. That is the summary in front of you. Please, everyone, write write down. I have explained five main drugs today. Very important lecture. Today's lecture is really very important. So adrenaline, noradrenaline, isoprenaline, dopamine, and dobutamine. Those students who know the receptors. 
which are stimulated by each of them no need to learn the their action on blood pressure and their action on heart you can you can make the conclusions by yourself if you can understand the concept so that is the summary that is the summary which drug is stimulating which uh, receptor instead of learning so adrenaline mein beta 3 nahi hota hai nor adrenaline mein beta 2 nahi hota hai aur isoprenaline mein alpha nahi hota hai dobutamine dopamine mein d1 d2 hota hai aur alpha 1 aur beta 1 hota hai alpha 1 beta 1 and dobutamine mein only beta 1 you have to learn these receptors give me a thumbs up at right my best give me a thumbs up so i am done with blood vessels now i have to come on the second organ is heart so one by one, I have to explain you these organs. After that, I will come on uses and side effects, I guess. So it is a big chapter. Can't be completed today only. So tell me the drug which decreases heart rate. Only one drug I have told you which decreases heart rate. What is the correct answer? You can write down your answer in the chat box. Is it adrenaline? Is it isoprenaline? Is it noradrenaline or none? Which of the following drug decrease in heart rate by indirect action? Where indirect will be more prominent. Reflex action will be more prominent than direct action. Which drug is it? What will be the correct answer? Milin, would you like to try? Fatima, Osama, anyone among you wants to try? What is the correct answer? The correct answer is C. Yes, you are right. Noradrenaline may indirect action. You know, in noradrenaline, direct heart rate is increasing. But indirect due to rise in uh, DBP, there is fall in uh, reflex heart rate. And reflex is more prominent. You can see I have drawn one arrow here and two arrows here. So reflex is more prominent so fall in uh, uh, heart rate is more more there yes you all are right Milan, you are right this is the next question in front of you which of the following drug increases both systolic and diastolic blood pressure which of the following drug, drug is increasing both systolic and iso uh, diastolic both so i have told you the summary summary of all drugs you already know epinephrine epinephrine is adrenaline this is adrenaline this is another name of adrenaline dopamine nor adrenaline or ephedrine what you will say which is increasing both SBP also and DBP also. Yes, the first drug which I have taught you, the correct answer here will be of course D. Of course D. You can see, you can see in the table here that is noradrenaline. Noradrenaline is increasing SBP also, DBP also. SBP due to beta 1 stimulation and DBP due to due to alpha alpha uh, yes, alpha 2 stimulation. Al, al, uh, alpha or beta 1 may say dbp rise will be due to alpha 1 stimulation so alpha 1 and beta 1 so no case stimulation ki wajah se done the correct answer here is no million not b the correct answer here is d not at all done have you got it this is the next question in front of you only drug which is only beta 1 selective no other receptors is stimulated only one receptor which is stimulated is beta 1 which drug stimulates only beta 1 which is beta 1 selective agonist i have told you i have already told you would you like to tell me the answer Malin? Fatima, anyone? Would you like to try? What is the correct answer here? Beta 1 selective agonist. Who will tell me which among the following is beta 1? Yes, you are right. It is dobutamine. The correct answer here is C. You can see selective beta 1 agonist is dobutamine. In dobutamine, only beta 1 is uh, stimulated. Yes, Milind, you are right. The answer here is C. Many questions can be framed like this. What is this vasomotor reversal? I have already told you. It is applicable for adrenaline. Adrenaline mein kya? Dales vasomotor reversal kiski wajah se hota hai? Kiski wajah se hota hai? Stimulation of which receptors? Alpha 1 ki alpha 2 ki beta 1 ki beta 2. Four options are in front of you. Alpha 1, alpha 2, beta 1, beta 2. Kiski stimulation ki wajah se? Vasomotor reversal of dale hota hai. Anyone among you want to tell? Want to tell me the answer? Very difficult question but very beautifully framed. The correct answer here is D. It is the stimulation of beta 2 receptors. This is vasomotor reversal of dale you can see. You can see vasomotor of reversal of Dale in which we give alpha blocker along with adrenaline before adrenaline. So alpha blocker ki wajah se rise to gaya, only fall bacha, only fall or only fall is due to beta 2. Fall is due to beta 2. So correct answer vasomotor reversal of Dale is due to beta 2 stimulation. Alpha to gaya na, alpha blocker de diya humne tabhi to vasomotor reversal of Dale aya. Vasomotor reversal of Dale lane ke liye first we have to give alpha blocker before giving adrenaline. So alpha receptor ka stimulation to ho gai nahi kyunki alpha blocker hai already. So, now bacha beta. So, beta means beta 1 ki beta 2. So, correct answer here is beta 2. Give me a thumbs up if you got it. So, many more questions are in front of you. Just a second. But the time is limited. So, I have to move further. Let me announce my next class. Then you people can quit. But it is a big chapter. Big chapter. I will continue it tomorrow. Don't worry. Currently, thank you for being with me. Uh, if you want more lectures and notes the complete ans recordings is already available along with complete pharmacology recordings 
already available on the app. So it is not available on YouTube. It is available on free of cost on an Academy Learners app. So for, what, for watching it, what do you have to do? Go to the Play Store. From the Play Store, install an Academy Learners app. You have to install this app. After installing it, go to the Need PG category. Select Goal as Need PG category. After selecting Goal as Need PG category, search my name. My name is Dr. Priyanka Sachdev. See the spelling. You will search my name under educators. You will find my name. Below my name, you will find my profile link. Please follow my profile link. After following my profile link, you will see the list of the recordings, free video recordings along with PDF of the notes available there. So it is very useful. Please try it once. Go to the app. And uh, these all are free. But you will require a code to unlock it if you are a new user. The code is Sachdev10. That is my surname only. S-A-C-H-D-E-V. Sachdev10 is the code. Please apply this code. That is about free platform. We have paid platform also on an academy. Free to ye hai. Paid pe we have two subscriptions. What are the two subscriptions? We have Plus and Iconic. So what is the difference between them? In Plus, you will get access to live and recorded lectures of Unacademy only. On Iconic, you will get along with Unacademy, you will get prep ladder recorded lectures also. And only one day is left to grab this exciting opportunity. What is the opportunity here? Today is 11th of September. If you take plus subscription today now, you will get printed free notes. Free notes free of cost. These printed notes of all 19 subjects, you will get free of cost. Notes are highly beneficial. Many of them are framed by all of us, by all the great educators present on the paid form. So please don't miss this opportunity. If you take plus subscription after today now, you have to pay for these notes. So that is the last chance. And if you are thinking of taking this subscription today, apply the code. The same code such day 10, you will get maximum discount if you apply this code before payment. Done. These are the batches available on the platform. One for FMG, one for Next and many for the Need PG. Separate batches. And this is the schedule for the grand test. You can see every Sunday we have grand test. Every Sunday. You, you, if you participate in this, you will come to know your real-time ranking all over the India. Last two offers for you. If you take a subscription for 12 months, you will get two months extra. If you take a subscription for four years, it is the cheapest subscription. Cost only 60,000 for one year and 75,000 for, uh, for four years uh, in Plus and Iconic. Done. And these are the other subscriptions available. In Plus, starting from two months till four years. In Iconic, starting from 12 months till four years. See the price. See the price of all subscription. You will find out longer the subscription, cheaper it is. So better, best to go with four year subscription. So you know monthly installment is only 1200 or 1400 depending on plus and iconic. So if you are a first prof or second prof student, please take a longer subscription, three year or four year. And if you are a pre-final or final year uh, student, you can take smaller subscriptions also. Whatever subscription you are planning to take, the code is same. If you apply the code such day 10, you will get maximum discount. Before payment, if you apply this code, you will get maximum discount on your subscription. So please learn the code is useful for both students. Those who want uh, the lectures for free, so they can unlock the free lectures. And those who are uh, who want to take the paid, uh, paid platform, then you will get the discount. So please distribute this code to your batchmates, to your seniors, juniors, everyone in your college. Thank you very much. See you after one minute. I will take another class on YouTube. I will take another class on YouTube that is PSM Biostatistics. I will teach you probability.